In this video, I'm going to be going over a new infrastructure provisioning tool called Pulumi. I will start with a quick intro, and then we're going to go through a hands-on demo using Python where we're going to build a basic AWS EC2 footprint to demonstrate using it in the real world. So let's get started with what is Pulumi. Pulumi is a modern infrastructure as code tool that allows the provisioning of infrastructure using standard coding languages. Pulumi serves the same role that something like a CloudFormation or Terraform would, as it's where you would codify your infrastructure. Where Pulumi is unique to those is you can define your infrastructure in a traditional programming language like TypeScript, Go, or Python, instead of a markup language like HCL or YAML. Pulumi is open source, but it does have some paid tiers for organizational use. We will just be using its free for personal use tier to unlock all of its back and tooling through its web app, but we'll look at that later in this tutorial. Pulumi isn't the only provisioning tool that claims to allow you to write infrastructure in a traditional programming language. AWS has its newer open source cloud development kit. I made a tutorial about that as well, and that should be on the card on the top of this video or in the description if you're interested in the CDK. The difference with Pulumi, besides being a different tool with different patterns, is that it's cloud agnostic and it's not maintained by a major cloud provider. And it also provides the custom backend app that I mentioned earlier if you choose to use it. As far as support, Pulumi has a trick up its sleeve. It piggybacks on the popular Terraform providers for its own providers. This not only increases the provider footprint of this relatively newer tool to include all the main cloud services, but also do tools such as Kubernetes, Docker, Okta, Cloudflare. This piggybacking also speeds up the update time when a cloud provider or tool gets updated. Those updates quickly get propagated to be supported by Terraform and then in turn Pulumi. This trick bypasses a lot of the problems with newer infrastructure tools because it already supports a majority of cloud and operational tooling. Before we get started with the physical coding, we need to talk about the Pulumi backend and the Pulumi state management. Pulumi has a web application that allows you to manage your state through the application. This backend avoids the need to use a custom backend system. In Terraform, this was S3 or Dynamo. This web application also will display information and changes about a given stack and it presents it in a really nice modern web application user interface. Later in the tutorial, we're actually gonna use this backend app, but you always have the option to keep and manage your state locally if you don't wanna use this service. I recommend using the service initially because it's pretty clean and does have some nice features. Also for individuals, it's fully free and allows unlimited deployments. So although there's pricing tiers, those are all for organizations and teams. So let's get to some code. If you wanna follow along and have any questions about setup or configuration, please check the description for a link with a bit more setup info because we're gonna be skimming through the setup pretty quickly. So first off, you need to have an AWS account with basic AWS CLI setup and with your secret access key and AWS access key ID properly configured. You'll also want to have Python 3.6 or later and basic Python knowledge. We can install Pulumi onto our Mac with Homebrew with brew install Pulumi. For me, I'm running Linux on this Windows subsystem, so I would have to install it using this curl command. Like I said previously, more setup information will be linked down below. We can do a quick sanity check with Pulumi version. And there it lists out the version that shows that we have the Pulumi CLI installed. Okay, so first we're gonna need to set up our Pulumi account. We can do this by clicking sign in on the top right of the Pulumi homepage and creating a new Pulumi account. Once we've done that, we can go into our CLI and run the Pulumi login command. This will allow us to either pass in a token or click the link provided. And this will authenticate our Pulumi CLI to the web application. Once you've authenticated, you can take a look back at the Pulumi web application, and right here we can create a new project if we wanted to use the UI, but we're actually gonna be doing that through the CLI. I'm gonna first make a Pulumi tutorial directory, and then I'm gonna CD into that directory. Next, we'll be creating the project. We can do that with Pulumi new AWS Python because we're going to be using the AWS provider and we're going to be using Python. If we hit enter on this, it's going to ask us for a project name. The default, if you don't provide anything, is just the name of the directory. I'm going to be calling this web app. And then here we can pass in a description. I'm just going to leave it the default with enter. And here it asks for a stack name. So thus far, we've been setting up a project. Within a project, there can be individual stacks. You can think of stacks as environments. So in this case, we're going to be creating the stack dev, which is a part of the project web app. So then later we can have multiple different stacks. We can have a dev stack, we can have a prod stack, and they're all part of one project. So I'm just going to hit enter for dev. And now it asks us to specify a region. I'm actually going to change this to US East 2. You can set this to whatever you want or whatever AWS region you want to use. I want to use US East 2 Ohio. And then if you hit enter, it should finalize setting up your Pulumi project. It has a few more directions on screen to set up our Python environment, which I'm going to follow. So I'm just going to copy and paste these. 
So this first one is creating our Python virtual environment in the directory called VM. And then we're going to activate this virtual environment. As you can see, we're now in the virtual environment. And then we're going to install the requirements from requirements.txt. Now I'm going to open this directory in my code editor, which is just VS Code. So let's take a look at some of the files that were created when we bootstrapped our Pulumi project. The first one is the requirements.txt file that we installed with pip install requirements.txt. All that's in here is just Pulumi and the Pulumi AWS provider. Next, we have our project configuration file that is Pulumi.yaml. Here we have the name, the runtime, and the description. Then we have our individual stack configuration. This was Pulumi.dev, dev being the stack name.yaml. Here we just have the AWS region. We have a git ignore, we have our virtual environment directory, and then we have our main.py file. Pulumi pre-populates some example code for us. This just imports Pulumi and then imports S3 from Pulumi underscore AWS. It creates an AWS resource and then it exports that resource name to our console once it's finished. We can preview the changes that Pulumi would apply if we were to run this by running Pulumi preview. So this output's just telling us that we're gonna be creating a stack called webapp-dev, and it's gonna be creating two different resources, one of those being the web app stack and one being the actual bucket. We can actually run this Pulumi code and actually create these resources with Pulumi up. Pulumi will ask us to confirm to make these changes, which I'm gonna say yes. Once it's all finished up, it should have the output of our bucket name, which is the string my bucket with the 67E1B93. So that's gonna be our bucket name. We can see that bucket in our AWS console. This was created by Pulumi. If we come to our Pulumi console, we actually see that there's a new stack in here. If we click into it and we go to activity, it shows our recent Pulumi run. We can see our changes here and it shows us the output of the creation. In the resources tab, it gives us a nice output of resources that are managed by this project and stack. But as of now, all we have in here is just this one Pulumi run. Let's give an example. Let's say we ran this Pulumi code, we created this bucket, but later down the road, I came into the console and turned on static website hosting. Let's just give it an index file and hit save. We've now modified the resource that Pulumi has created. If we were to run Pulumi up again, Pulumi state is not gonna understand the change and it's gonna say there's no resources to change. To update the Pulumi state and Pulumi's understanding of the resources that it's managing, we have to run the Pulumi refresh command. This command checks the resources that are running in AWS in our case and compares them to the current state. This does not make any modifications. It's just updating the state and Pulumi's understanding of the infrastructure. So I'm going to click yes on this. Do you want to perform this refresh? Now that we've run Pulumi refresh, if we were to run Pulumi up again, this should now revert the changes that we made manually in the console to the configuration that's defined in Pulumi. Here you can see that it's removing the website configuration. If we just say yes on this action, and now we come back to the AWS console and refresh, we see that it's removed the static website hosting. So that's enough of the individual example code that Pulumi provided. Now we're gonna be coding our own EC2 instances in Pulumi. First, I'm gonna destroy this stack with Pulumi destroy so we have a clean slate to work with. Now let's take a look at our code. So we're gonna remove all of these AWS S3 references, and then we're just going to blanket import Pulumi AWS as a AWS. So this is just blanket importing the whole Pulumi provider. So first we're going to create an instance and it's going to be AWS.EC2.instance. In here, we're going to first provide the ID parameter. For us, that's just going to be Pulumi web dash app or web app. Next, we need to provide an instance type. For us, it's just going to be t2.micro for the smallest instance type. Then we need to define security groups. This is going to be a list. We're going to leave this blank for now. Now we need to define an AMI. We're also going to leave this one blank. And last, we're going to need to define user data or the script that runs when it gets started up. And we're going to leave that blank as well. So let's define our security group. We can do that with aws.ec2.security group. In here, we need to pass in an ID which we're just going to be web security group. Next, we need to pass in a description. We're just going to be a basic description that's going to be passed into the security group. For us, it's web SG for HTTP. And last, we're going to be setting an ingress. An ingress is what's going to store our basic security group properties. So this is where we're going to define the protocol, which is going to be TCP. We're going to define a from port, which is going to be 80. This isn't a string. Sorry, this is an int. 
we're going to define a two port, which is also going to be 80. So this is just for HTTP, 80 to 80. And then we need to define a CIDR block. This is our CIDR blocks, and this is going to be a range of IPs to use to open the security port up to. We're just going to use 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 to fully open it up to the world. Now that we've created our security group, we can reference it in our instance definition with sg.name. Now we can move on to the AMI. We can just get an AMI with aws.getAMI. Here we want to filter by most recent. We're just being grabbing an Amazon AMI. So owner is a list. We're just going to specify Amazon. And then we can set a filter. This filter is just going to look for an AMI with the name that matches a value. So we need to specify a name and then also values, which is going to be a list. The value that we're going to use is just going to be amzn-ami-hvm-star. This is just going to be specifying an Amazon Linux image. We just want to pull the most recent that's owned by Amazon. Now let's pass this AMI ID back into our instance parameters with AMI.ID. Last, we're going to define some user data. This user data is just going to be a Python multi-line string. In here, we're just going to be creating a script that's going to be running a very simple web server for us. So we can do that with creating a multi-line string and then starting our hash bang bin bash for our script. As far as our index file, we are just going to pass uname-n into an index.html file. And then we're going to be running a simple HTTP server with nohup python-m simple HTTP server over port 80. Now we can add the call to our user data back into our parameters of our instance. And now we're just going to clean this up as well. Once we've cleaned this up, we're going to add one more line of code. And this is going to be a Pulumi output. And we're going to do that with Pulumi.export. And then we're going to provide an ID. And then we're going to reference our instance and get its public IP address. I just noticed that I spelt instance wrong up above. So I'm going to fix that. I forgot an N. And then now I can reference its public IP port. Let's save this file. Running Pulumi Preview to test my code and see all my spelling mistakes. The first mistake that I have, I'm missing a comma after ami.id. Next, I spelled ingress wrong. I missed an S. A few of these errors, it was harder to type than I thought while talking. Okay, let's see. Oh, I spelled port wrong. I put the R in the wrong spot. Hopefully last time. Oh, one more. I forgot an L in public IP. Okay. Now we can actually run our preview. So the preview is going to show us that we're creating three different resources. We're creating the stack, a security group, and an instance. Now we can actually build this with Pulumi up. It asks us if we want to confirm that we want to run this. And now that it's been built, we see that it actually passes out the output of web app IP. And then it gives us the public IP of the instance we created. So I can copy that. And then we're going to look at it in the AWS console. We can see that it built the resource with the matching public IP. And then if I test the public IP, I see that our web server is working and it's showing us its internal DNS name. If we go to the Pulumi console, we can see that it shows all of our individual updates we've made to the stack. If we click into one of these updates, it actually shows us the changes that we just made on that Pulumi uprun. And it shows us individual resources that are defined within the stack. And a whole bunch of other AWS resource details about the individual resources. A cool little tip is whenever you see this little AWS link on the right hand side, we can click on this and this actually takes us to the AWS console for the resource that we're looking at in the Plumi app. Now that we're done, we can come back in and destroy our application. It asks if we want to confirm, we can say yes. And then once that's destroyed, it gives us a command to run to completely remove the stack. It asks us the name of the stack that we'd like to remove and makes us confirm by typing it out. And there. Now the dev stack has been fully removed, not only resource wise, but from the Pulumi application. So yeah, that's Pulumi. Now we've talked about what Pulumi is, went over a quick example of Pulumi flow with some sample Python code. 
Hopefully that put you in the right direction. Let me know if you want me to make a part two and subscribe if you want to see more infrastructure and ops tutorials. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and have a good day.